I'm John from Fly 8 Mike Alpha, CFI turned airline pilot turned back to CFI. Come along on my journey flying Alaska to Florida and beyond. And welcome back to day, is it day three? It's day three and a half now. Oh yeah. Um, and about to leave Cordova, head over to Yakutat, and then from there, hopefully Sidka. So big goals today. We'll get some fuel in Yakutat, and the goal is Sidka. So that is 400 plus miles from where we are now. Because yesterday we did uh, quite a few miles, but it was all in a circle. <laughs> yeah, we made it like 30 miles closer to Reno. So not really going in the right direction. I haven't checked the calendar lately. I think it's like the seventh. So we still got like two weeks-ish, mm, we 10 time. days to make it to Reno. So plenty of time. Um, Steph's feeling much better now because before she almost died, um, <laughs> whatever that was. Wasn't feeling so yeah, good last night. So. Um, yep, but so getting you're there. up for it now. So a couple things I learned about Cordova while we were here. Um, when they say the phone lines are full or busy, they literally are. Your cell phone does not always work because there's very limited space on the circuit boards or whatever bandwidth bandwidth yeah basically <laughs> um also most restaurants close for the season along with most hotels most restaurants are out of food for the season and I oh yeah when you know because i couldn't eat dinner last yeah night, so. <laughs> she was basically just laid up in the room the whole time but when you google urgent care as well on google maps uh just in case things went further south um you get dentist you get ace hardware um, and you also get some sort of weird walk-in clinic. So those are the medical services available to you in Cordova, Alaska, uh, should you ever need them. But um, I think enough of this. I think it's time to go fly. Time to Let's go fly? Let's do it. Let's go fly. <laughs> Bye-bye, Cordova. It was a fun town. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> I had a blast last night. I had a really good time. Had a great beer, nice nitro milk stout, really liked it. Sure. Um, you, you wait till I'm not there to drink. Is it because you think I'm an alcoholic so you can't drink in front of me? Like, is that, <laughs> is that maybe, why? Maybe it has something to do with it. All right, let's find the shoreline to hug. Shore. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea to me. Shore. Go this way. Yeah, come around the left. Toward shore, because it looks cold down there. And I forgot my water wings. There's some kind of weird bug in here. I thought you meant a weird bug with the iPad, but in fact, you just mean a weird <laughs> insect. I was like, no, the iPad seems to be working properly. No, a weird insect. The landscape here is just crazy, like the how lumpy it is and how all that formed. I mean, I guess that's just, that probably all used to be covered in ice 50 or 100 years ago. Glacier tracks. Yeah, it's just so funny. It would be fun to have a cub. There's lots of doable spots if you had a cub up there. It'd be so cool just to pop out and go camping next to one of those like little lakes or next to one of those waterfalls. All right, so going to Yakutat, if we have to do it IFR, the Mocha was 5,600. So if we get into some crappy weather, it should be good finally. Like. They said the weather's not going to be that good today. It's overcast, but it's like overcast 7,000, so it should be fine. should be doable, but uh, 5,600 was the Mocha, if we have to do it. And then there was an RC over Anchor Center up near us right now, and one further along the route. So you can always file airborne and then go in IFR. I think the freezing level, briefer said it was like 5,000 or so. That sound right? Yeah. Gulf of Alaska off our right, and a bunch of glaciers off our left. The big glacier over there, the Sk 
Scott Glacier and the Shenden Glacier. Sheridan. Sheridan Glacier, when you zoom in further, you do see that the R and the I are in fact two separate characters. <laughs> <laughs> it is the not The coolest part that I hope we get to see today is the Malaspina Glacier. Malaspina Glacier? Where's that Malaspina. at? Malaspina. It's Mount this Spina? huge, huge one that goes right down to the water. This one. Malaspina Glacier. It's humongous. Wow, yeah. That's, so, uh, it's so beautiful. It's right by Yakutat. Yeah, it's before Yakutat, yeah. Nice. On the way to Yakutat. Very cool. Yeah. Onward to Malaspina. All right, here's the trivia question for the day. How big is the Malaspina Glacier in square miles? Um, you could also say length and width, um, because obviously it's not a square. And yeah, what do they win? Nothing. <laughs> Bragging rights. <laughs> And bonus trivia of the day, besides how many square miles is that gigantic glacier, what is the first part of the airplane, or what is the most likely part of the airplane to first see ice develop when flying in icing conditions? Kind of not like this. I mean, it's 37 degrees outside, and it's a little rainy. So where would I first expect to see ice on this Cessna 170? It's very common, like a 172 or any other, you know, 150, 152. So where would you first be looking for ice to develop on this airplane? smush that bug? That's not the bug that I was talking about. Oh, that one doesn't bother you. It's the other bug that bothers you. <laughs> okay. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> exactly. Now you're beginning to understand me. Wow. I'm so glad we've reached this conclusion. It's only taken months. <laughs> it's the other small black bug that looks just like that that bothers you. <laughs> it Bill's fine. It's Fred is the problem. <laughs> The other Got one it. was brown and bigger, and it looked like it could possibly bite us. Oh, that's unfortunate. At least uh, it's on your side of the airplane. <laughs> All the way over there. Set out the base of final two nine landing long Yakuta. Pavement. <laughs> Your favorite. And that was a pretty cool flight in. We are officially in Yakutat. Yakutat. Yak 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 yes, exactly. <laughs> that, that thing. Um, and halfway done with the day. Made pretty good time. Just over a two hour flight in. So weather's looking good. We called the briefer again. Checked out the weather cams again. Weather cam's still looking good. ADSB is working because there's an antenna right here pretty close to us. Uh, so we have weather, live-ish weather for Sitka. And now it's time to go on to Sitka. Yakutat traffic, 6 to Delta, entering runway 11, departing south, straight out, Yakutat. Cool. Oh, I'll go ahead and give you a path on over to Sitka. Cool. Nice thing is, if we get into bad weather, the uh, Mocha is going over there, we're just over 2,000 feet, so it's a lot more doable. <laughs> we actually go IFR and not have to worry about ice.
ETA, two hours, 15 minutes. Woohoo! Onward to Sitka. I will be so ready for dinner at two hours and 15 minutes from now, I'm dying. And onward into deteriorating weather, the theme of our trip. I think just coming down just below the mountaintops here will help, you know, just by 500 feet or so. Definitely getting rocked around a little bit from that little bit of wind. Only, what, like, probably 10, 15 knots worth of winds aloft. Try to get a little lower there in these clouds, too. Without, uh, closing the throttle plate so much to get the carb ice. Yeah. We've got to make that jump there. Yeah. That next little... Yeah, I guess this is where it starts getting a little dicey with, uh, stuff to hit, low vis, and... Yep. Lots of flying over water. This would be a great spot to have a raft. Really confident in this engine. I'm trying to figure out if there's a ceiling above us or... I think there might be I a layer is, ahead. Yeah. I think there's a layer above us and a layer ahead that's just about even with us. We're going to have to go above or go around somehow. We're already down to about a thousand feet. We're going to see people even talk on out here. It's 20 to 9. Yeah? Yeah. If anyone else is uh, out here. No, it's not a soul. It's kind of weird not to hear anybody on the radio, huh? Uh, yeah, weird is one way of describing it. <laughs> Unsettling, uncomfortable. <laughs> There's lots of words I would use to describe the situation. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> How I feel at the moment. 75 miles to go, about. Probably more like Great, now 85 or 90 miles. Falling for marginal five miles vis. That's great. And all yeah, the other places the are IFR. Three thousand. Okay, the ceiling still three. Five miles vis. Yeah, I'll take five miles vis. I don't yeah. care. Just give me the ceiling. Sure. All right. Now that ADSB is gone, the last known altimeter setting was twenty-nine eighty-four. Thank you. And uh, they were calling it overcast 3,000, light rain, 5 miles of is. At least we still have a steady, I would say, 4 or 5 miles of is. Yeah, I would call it 3, but yeah. Alaskan 5. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I could have sworn I downloaded all the charts and it said updated, but apparently that's what I got to work with. So, yeah. Not uh, gonna be super helpful on the cell phone. Yeah, it'd be worse if it was a bunch of patchy fog like we had first day. Yeah. This is just pretty steady low vis. Yeah. Hopefully it'll get clear again, kind of like Valdez going into uh, Sitka is what I'm hoping for. A nice big clear spot over the airport. Hopefully this crap didn't like move in and sock it in, but... There is uh, instrument approaches going in there, so yeah. that should uh, work out well for us. I'll start actually dialing up some of that. 4.30. Okay. Good idea. So there's the last of my land that I can see right there. Well, let's hang a little closer to land, eh? There's no reason not to, so we're about three miles offshore right now. We can touch our turn it back. Uh, yeah. So... So what? Oh, I'm just not having any contact with the ground at this point. So, shocker, the weather was not exactly as good as it was forecast to be, and it kept getting a lot, lot worse as we got further and further towards Sitka. So, with the options between going towards Sitka or turning around and going back to Yakutat for the night, well, You'll just have to watch part two to find out because this is taking a little bit of time to get through and we don't like those 30 minute long episodes. So in the next part of two or part two of this episode, we will show you guys everything we did to actually get the airplane on the ground safely, fly through the nasty weather, it got a lot worse, but between Steph and I, we were able to figure it out. Obviously we didn't die because we're still here and we're making this video for you to see now. So we're still around and survived, at least this episode. So. You guys know what to do. Like the video if you do. Subscribe if you have not already. Keep an eye out in the next couple days for the new episode coming out. We will see you guys in the next episode. Oh, it just works stuff. Want me to fly?
You're like, no, I'd rather text and fly than let you touch the controls.